Welcome back to Raspo Farmer. This week I'm making a corduroy A-line skirt. Now, so I know most of the time I use repurposed or thrifted fabrics, and I will admit this is not quite either. So Joann's has their clearance fabric, and then every so often they put an extra 40% off. So it'll be 50 to 80% off plus 40% off. And then for your birthday month, they send you an extra 20% off. So if you time it right and you stack all of those, you can get fabric for stupid cheap prices, which is my price point. So I got this really pretty light brown corduroy with a really fine corduroy. It's a very small texture. And I got a yard and a third of it, so a yard and a foot. And I got this book of patterns at the thrift store for a dollar. It's a good price point. And it's just a, here's the cover of the book, just a basic A-line skirt. I'm going to use the corduroy, so it'll be a lot um, calmer colors. But if you want to follow along, we can see how this goes. I haven't tried any of the patterns in the book yet. I don't know if all the pieces are there. I don't know if it's cut out to the wrong size. So this is going to be an adventure for everyone. So there was a slight moment of panic when I started pulling pieces out and all I found were pieces saying jacket. And the book includes basically three things, a skirt, a dress tunic, and a jacket. There's variations on them, but it's basically those three items. And I kept pulling out pieces for jacket. I'm like, no, they're not in here and these ones are cut out. But the skirt pieces are, I think, all there. I haven't completely checked, but they are on an uncut sheet. So I've got three envelopes, one for the skirt, one for the jacket, and one for the dress. So I can cut apart all my pieces and everyone can have their own envelope and I can stop having panic attacks in the future. So future me will thank me, hopefully. Finally got all my pieces laid out. It took a minute to figure out the directions are not helpful. And apparently there's a lower panel that can go on the skirt or doesn't. And my pattern doesn't say whether I need it or not. But the good news is I have a fair chunk of fabric left to do something. I don't know what. I don't know. I'll figure something out. But I got it all pinned. I do have to... That is the piece for the pocket. They're like patch pockets. I need four of them cut. So that'll get me two. And then once I cut it, I need to move it down and cut two more. But I'm going to see if I can get this cut out tonight before I quit for the night because I lost the ambition. Which is possible, but we'll see how far we can get tonight. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, and it's probably going to be hard to see on camera, but I can at least describe it. Corduroy is a fabric with a nap, meaning it is a one directional fabric. So all my pattern pieces, I need the top up here and the bottom over here. Because when I look ridiculous and start paying my fabric, this way feels like paying a dog. It's nice and smooth when you pet them head to tail. When I go this way, it feels a lot rougher, like when you rub their fur backwards. So this is the direction of my nap. I have all my top pieces up here and all my hemlines down here, which is gonna make sure I have my skirt not going topsy-turvy and looking crazy. I've got my parents, my pieces all cut out and I've started getting things sewn together. I got the pockets sewn onto the panels and the side front attached to the center front. And now I'm going to work on finishing the seams as I go. And normally I do what is called a flat felt seam, where I just basically roll the seam up and then stitch it down. But this has a narrower seam allowance. The pattern calls for a half inch seam allowance instead of a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I have a little bit less fabric to work with and it's a thicker fabric being the corduroy. 
so I don't think a flat fold is going to work. And then for where the pockets are, I just have a big lump of fabric. So I think what I'm going to do is for the side with the pocket, I will just stitch it down so it can't ravel. And then the side without the pocket, I'm just going to fold it over and stitch it. So that way my raw edges are either encased or at least sewn down so that they aren't raveling and causing trouble. I'm just going to fold it under, carefully hold it, give it a press, and then I'll hold it down with a pin just so it's not trying to wander on me. And that's how I'll finish the seams on this. So I got the skirt pretty much done. I got all my seams done. I got the zipper in. First try, which is slightly miraculous for me. Tried it on just to see how it fits and it's way too huge. So I put it on inside out and these are the side seams and I put a pin on each side where it needs to be. So I think I'm going to cut on just the inside of my seam, put a new seam in, and I'll get it almost fit. So it's still a little big with those pins. And then I'll put in some darts just to help shape it better and keep it from sliding off because that would be unfortunate and embarrassing. So I was so close to being done, but I'd rather take the time and A, actually have something I wear and B, have something that fits me nice because half the point of sewing this is so I can have clothes that fit me beautifully. Last night, I was able to just about get the skirt done. Stayed up later than I wanted to working on it, but I got it done except for the hem. And the reason why I didn't do the hem is I wanted it to be able to hang overnight and basically think about what it's done. Um, this is more a concern with like great big circle skirts, but I still wanted this to have a chance to hang. And my light bulb is trying to go out, so it's flickering and I'm sorry. Um, trains of thought are hard today. So I wanted it to just sit and hang a bit. Um, with a circle skirt, there's so much fabric there you want to pull and hang basically its final position before you go and cut and hem. So this is hung overnight. I'm going to give it a good iron and then I'm going to iron in the hem so that I can hem it when I get it. And we're going to get the kitty belly. The kitty belly. She's so sweet. I did a pretty basic hem on this. I'm just doing about half inch, five eighths inch. And then iron down and then fold it over again. So nothing fancy, nothing huge, just a nice basic hem. And I'm giving it a really good pressing so I don't have to pin it. And there's a hem ironed in. I think I'm going to machine stitch it down. It'll just be quicker and easier. Maybe not easier, but it'll just be quicker to get it done and have a skirt done. Because fall is definitely here. Colder weather's here. We've started using the wood stove. 
usually just in the mornings to take the chill off the house, but we've still started using the wood stove and it's cold. So get this done and get started on some other cooler weather projects. So I finished hemming the skirt this morning. It was really easy. I just ran around on the machine. I didn't even bother to do a hand hem. And I also add a hook and eye at the top of the zipper. And that way, if my zipper decides to migrate down, my skirt isn't going to fall down. And it just makes life a little bit easier when you're putting your skirt on, you can do the hook and eye and then pull up your zipper. More concern of things that are heavy and trying to pull down while you're trying to get them put on, or if it's a tight fit and you need to kind of pull the zipper and coax it. So it's not super vital for this one, but I like to have to all my skirts just in case. Or if I don't do a hook and eye, just depending on how the skirt is, I'll do um, their more flat ones. I believe they're called plackets and they lock a little bit more securely. You find them on um, dress pants on the inside. So that's what I tend to use for skirts, but in this case, a hook and eye work best. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It does stick out a little bit funky at the hips here, but I think as I wash and wear it, that'll kind of settle in, but it also gives me room if I need to bend over or anything. I have plenty of room. I've got two pockets. They end up getting made a little bit narrower when I had to take in the side. I could have just taken in this part and left the rest alone, but I decided to slim it down all the way just to give a more even look. And I just popped on quick to model it, try it on. And normally when I finish something, I throw it in the wash and give it a good iron afterwards. And there's a couple reasons for that. Part of the reason is when I cut something out, I do it on the floor. And even though I run the vacuum first, the cat insists on helping. So everything usually has a film of white cat hair. And I also use a lot of chalk markings usually. This skirt was so basic, it didn't have any darts or points to be marked out on. But normally I have chalk residue on everything and it just needs a run through the washer to get it taken out or if I'm doing buttonholes I'll use pen or pencil to mark them out because I need very crisp precise lines so a quick run through the washing machine takes care of those pretty easy. And then I'll give it a good iron. Try not to have too many clothes that need ironing all the time but I like to give it an iron after that first wash and that really helps set the hems and the cuffs and anything like that that you want nice and good and crisp. You give it good iron, gets it off to a good life. So this is how my skirt turned out. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I can't wait to wear it now that weather's getting cooler. Next project, I've got some flannel for a dress to make up and I think it's gonna be so cozy. I can't wait to finish it and try it on. Be sure to like and subscribe so you make sure you can see next week's video.